Hi everyone, this is Mark Van de Wettering of the BrainWagon blog. I thought I'd demo a little gadget that I ordered off of uh, Amazon actually for about 23 bucks. Um, you can get these a little cheaper on eBay, um, probably down into the $14, $15 range, but this is a multi-purpose LCR meter and transistor tester that I got from, uh, these are imported from China. And the board itself has a uh, zero insertion force socket down here and a push button and a nice big LCD screen. Well, actually, I think, yeah, I think it's LCD and it's backed with an LED. But uh, on the back side, you can see what the goodies are all. This is an AT Mega 328, which is the same chip that's used in the Arduino. And uh, some various and sundry other little doohickeys. A little bit of wiring. It's a pretty nice little clean board. And it's all powered by a 9-volt cell. I uh, was hoping to actually print a 3D uh, printed case for this. Um, I'll, I'll provide a link uh, to the one that I've noted in, uh, there's one on Thingiverse that I've already seen, but I haven't tested it out. Um, but it should be good because dangling this battery around is not the best thing in the world, although they do actually run it through a little strain release, so at least it's not quite so terrible as it could be. Um, the way this thing works is um, it measures all sorts of components. So I have a whole bunch of weird different components. I thought I'd show you basically how it works. So let's see if the idea is that you can stick a component into this zero insertion force socket and you want to put them in the, the one, two, or three slot. It doesn't really matter which ones you do. So this is just a resistor. And if I remember my color codes correctly, this is uh, orange, orange, red. I don't I never remember what that is, but luckily I don't have to because you just push the button, it powers up, and it tells you that's a 33.3K ohm resistor. Pretty nifty, and it shows that it's connected between one and two. And I can hear Scrappy, my cat, trying to get into the business here. But anyway, so that's pretty cool, and it automatically powers off after a few seconds, so there's no on or off switch, which is kind of neat. Okay, but I have a multimeter for measuring those. Um, I actually do just recently got a, uh, a meter that was good enough for uh, doing caps, but um, let's see what this does. Oops. Sometimes on caps I get this message, and I'm not quite sure what the deal is. It seems like if I hold it down a little longer, no, maybe I've just not got this wired in quite right. Let me, let me try put it between pins one and three. This is, caps are the one thing that I've had a little bit of difficulty with. Well, well, we'll come back to that. I have had this work, but it's been a little unreliable on caps. Let's see, do I have another one? I have a smaller one. So let's try this one instead. Yeah, so this, if you look at carefully at this thing, it's a 68 picofarad, and sure enough, that's a 67 picofarad. So I don't know whether the deal is with the, we'll try the electrolytic once more, just for fun. I'm going to go ahead and snap this in. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is a 0.1 microfarad, 100 nanofarad. And you can see that it measures the equivalent series resistance. I don't know what the deal is, why that sometimes doesn't work as well as it should, but there you go. So that's kind of helpful for measuring capacitors. But again, I do have a meter that I can use for that. Oops, oh well. Um, I wound this little toroidal coil um, as part of a, a Jewel Thief uh, circuit a long time ago. Probably you can find a video of mine. And it's actually a bifilar wired one, but we'll just measure the inductance between between two two of the coils. And voila, okay, between one and three, it says it's 0.38 microhenries and or uh, millihenries, sorry, and uh, you know 0.3 ohms. So you can figure out what the resistance is. If we uh, if we just look at the um, we can measure the the point the part to the tap 
point by clamping this down. Did I get that in there? No, I didn't. Hold on whilst we adjust. It's hard to do this with the camera in front of me. And you can see that that's 0.05 millihenries. So, microhenries, millihenries, mh, millihenries. Uh, 0.2 ohms. So, you know, that's kind of cool. Nifty. Uh, for winding coils and stuff, I have a feeling this will be really helpful when I'm doing like a simple low-pass filter. The really cool thing are for measuring transistors. So you can pop in a um, transistor. One of the things I always have difficulty with is um, remembering which the emitter, collector, and base are. And even if I look at the data sheets, it can be kind of difficult sometimes. And oftentimes, I know that I have piles and piles of NPNs and PNPs lying around. They're mostly 2N3904s and 2N3906s. But to tell the difference between one and remember what the EC and B are, well, now I don't have to. I just plug this thing in. And we see this is an NPN. Um, and you can see that the base emitter voltage drop is 697 milliamps or millivolts, which is about 0.7 volts, which is pretty normal. And it also measures the uh, HFE is the DC gain, something like that. I'll just put this again. And but the coolest thing is it tells me that pin one is the emitter and then the base and the collector. So you can keep track of this. So this is an NPN and I'm pretty sure this is a 3904. That's what I usually have floating around. Um, but here's a different transistor. Looks <laughs> virtually the same, but which one is this? Oh wow, so this is a JFET. And so you can see that the gate saturation voltage is 178 millivolts and some blah blah blah. The current drive blah blah is whatever. 0.25 millivolts, and you can figure out that the gate is on pin three, which is kind of nice. I'm not sure which one this is. I think this might be like a J201 or something like that. I don't think this is an MPF 102 or something like that, but anyway, so that's kind of cool. Um, here's another nearly identical looking transistor. And, oh, so this is a PNP. So this is probably a 3906 or maybe it's a 2N904, whatever it is, whatever the other type are. And again, you can measure the forward voltage drop from the base to the emitter and uh, all that kind of stuff. So that's just super cool. I really like that. And it even works with bigger transistors. So here's something. Um, I actually don't know which one this is. This is either some weird, well, it's some kind of MOSFET. This might be a 510, IRF 510. I'm going to get this right. Mm, yeah, I can't tell. <laughs> Sorry, gang. But, uh, it's either that or I think I have some logic level uh, uh, MOSFETs floating around too. But this is a MOSFET. It shows you the diagram. Again, pin 1 this time is the gate instead of pin 3, which is kind of interesting and measures the gate capacitance or whatever, which is pretty nifty. Um, and even, you know, so here's another one. Now, I was told that these things would also even identify power regulators. But as near as I can tell, that doesn't actually work. Oh, this is another, another MOSFET. So I haven't figured out which, which variations of these things they are, but uh, if I stared really closely, I could do that. But anyway, it's good enough to identify the gate and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Good reminder, especially because I actually had some, uh, some 2N222s that had weird pinouts compared to the normal data sheet that I kept around, which is kind of good. Um, this area I think you can use to actually put little surface mount parts on if you wanted to, which is pretty nifty. Uh, all in all, this was 23 bucks shipped. Uh, I had a moment on Prime, so they can uh, send this stuff to me. Um, it also is good for measuring diodes. Um, I don't, don't have any lying within arm's length here, but uh, it'll measure the, uh, the voltage drop across diodes for if you're like making a, some kind of a mixer or something where you need to match a couple of diodes. This would do a good job of that. Um, again, you could probably put service mount components down here. Um, 
you can use it on LEDs to figure out what the positive and or you know what the anode and cathode are for LEDs, which is nice. All in all, 20 bucks. Uh, I'm going to get a 3D printed case to put this in, and I think I'm just going to leave it on my shelf. Um, seems like a great buy, a great little piece of test equipment to have floating around um, if you're into radio building or electronics in general. Um, it's I I've been wanting to get a uh, good LCR meter like the one made for almost all digital electronics, but at 100 plus bucks for one, I really don't actually do that much of that kind of work, so it's kind of hard to justify. But 23 bucks, pretty cool. Um, two thumbs up. Uh, you can get these from, like I said, a number of vendors. I will provide a link to the one that I used uh, on, on Amazon, um, but uh, you probably get them a little cheaper from eBay. And that's about it. I hope that uh, it's been a long time since I posted anything on my, my uh, YouTube channel or even on my blog. I've been horrifically busy, but I have a new project in mind, and I hope to get that out the door sometime soon. So uh, if, you're, if you've been a longtime reader or follower of mine, uh, thank you for your patience, and maybe I'll have something a little more fun for you guys to stare at. So far, thumbs up for this one. Big win. Talk to you all later. Have a good day. Mark Van de Wettering of the Brainwagon Blog.